Hello there and welcome. This is Mikhail or Michael speaking. And as always, before this video starts, I want to express my gratitude towards those who decided to support me financially, be it through Patreon, PayPal or Super Thanks. I really appreciate your help. So thank you friends and have a blessed day. Now, today's video I want to start with the situation around Prigozhin. After so many time, the situation becomes more clear. And it would seem that Prigozhin really did die in that crash. This is now being reported by the official Russian government. And as I speak, there are reports coming in that the burial of Prigozhin and his close subordinates are currently happening in Russia. After all, it would seem all this was not part of any so-called maskerovka. And perhaps Prigozhin fell victim to classic internal power struggle in any way. It is still possible that all of this is maskerovka, but as time goes by, it becomes less and less likely. What is your opinion on this situation? Please go ahead and express it in the comment section. It would be interesting for me to read. Today's video I will start with now infamous village of Rabotina, which is located here and Ukrainian endeavors on this front. After so many days of fighting for this settlement, it is still hard to say who's in full control of the settlement. Recent report suggests that Ukrainians at some point are spotted here at the very outskirts of the settlement, which suggests that this settlement is now in their full control. However, some sources report that Russians are constantly counter-attacking and forcing them to step back. These Ukrainian attacks and Russian counter-attacks are happening daily. Some of them are successful, some of them are not. But generally, Russians are not willing to give up on Robotina just yet and are occasionally able to enter the settlement, but only for a little while. It doesn't seem like Russians are willing to retake the full settlement and are more interested in fixing as much Ukrainian soldiers on this area and within the village as it provides a perfect kill zone for the Ukrainian forces. For example, here on this video, you can see a Ukrainian Bradley vehicle that is delivering a platoon of soldiers to the southern part of Robotina is being easily spotted and as report suggests, destroyed by Russian ATGM. While this is happening, Russians are constantly bombarding the settlement with artillery and, to be more specific, flamethrower system Sansepyok. Here is the video taken by the Russian soldiers behind the battle line, which show distant explosions of Sansepyok rockets. And here on this video, you can see a night vision version of that. In fact, this is one of the reasons why Ukrainians are unable to entrench themselves in the southern part and why situation there is always fluid. This is where most of the fighting is now happening. It doesn't seem like Ukrainians can successfully launch attacks in the direction of next line of defense in front of Nova Prokopivka, which is the settlement located here and would be a next logical target for the Ukrainian assaults. Now let's discuss the situation on the general Arikhev front. In wave-like tactics, they are assaulting Russian positions in the general direction of settlement of Kampani, as well as assaulting to the flanks of Rabotine in attempt to spread their zone of control on the left side of this road as well as assaulting Russian positions to the right side of the road, but without any success. There were also reports of Ukrainian assaults that were happening in between Novoprokopivka and Verbove. Ukrainians, as report suggests, attempted at assaulting Russian positions located on the tactical heights here. If this attack were to be successful, they would outflank Russian positions located in between Rabotina and Novoprokopivka which could turn out to be ugly for the Russians. However, recent reports suggest that Ukrainian assaults here were unsuccessful. Ukrainians were also assaulting Russian positions in front of settlement of Verbova. Again, claims that they have reached the first line of Russian defense seems to be true, but it doesn't seem like they are assaulting it as of right now. At least I haven't seen any videos of Ukrainian armor or troops in the vicinity of the first line of Russian defense. It would seem that after reaching a front line here, they redirected their assaults here in attempt to spread their zone of control to the other side of this defensive line. Recent report suggests that Ukrainians were counterattacked here and from Verbove, and Russian sources claim that they were able to recover some of the recently lost positions here on this front. Generally, as I speak, situation around this whole front line remains to be very dynamic. 
and it has been for a long time. As always, one of the reasons of the ineffectiveness of Ukrainian forces here on this front is absolute superiority of artillery. Multiple graveyards of equipment is now formed along roads all across this front line. For example, here you can see Ukrainian infantry fighting vehicle driving on the road with many of other Ukrainian infantry fighting vehicle already disabled or destroyed. Of course, this one gets hit, thus was unable to deliver a platoon of soldiers to the front line. Ukrainians are unable to effectively support their assaults on this front in any direction, thus most of their attacks are being unsuccessful. Then from here let's move to the Vremivka tactical bridgehead and discuss the situation here. In the last few days Ukrainians continued their assaults from Urajayne and Strabayorsky in the general direction of settlement of Zavetne Bajanie. These assaults came from both sides of the Mokri Yali river, so from Staromayorsky and Urajayne. They were also attacking to the flanks of these settlements in attempt to close down these Russian salients. This one right here and this one bigger right here. Then there are some reports that Ukrainians had limited success assaulting this Russian salient located here, which looks like this. For example, this is depicted by a pro-Ukrainian map. So this is the situation of yesterday and this is the situation of today. Generally, it makes sense. Ukrainian assaults from Rivnopol and Novodarevka were intensifying day by day. And at some point, Russian defenses must have given in. We're still expecting more confirmation on this portion of the front. So when it comes, I am sure to report it. Ukrainians also continued their assault in the direction of settlement of Priyutne from settlement of Livadne. These attacks came from northwest and north directions. At this point in time, there is no reason to suggest that these assaults were successful. No success was reported by Russian or Ukrainian sources on this matter. Situation is also developing here on the right flank of Vremivka tactical bridgehead. Like I said previously, Ukrainians intensifying their assaults to the flank of Urajayne in attempt to close off these salients of Russian forces. Settlement of Novodonetsky was a subject of heavy artillery fire and aviation strikes. This was reported by pro-Russian source. This could identify that Ukrainians will launch more waves of assaults from Zlotaniva in the direction of the settlement in attempt to take control over it. Generally, the situation here is the same as on any other front lines. Despite Ukrainian attempts at advancing and capturing territories, they are denied by the Russian defense. Then from here, let's visit settlement of Avdiivka and discuss the situation here. The fighting here is not as intense as it is on the Zaporozhian front, however, it is still happening. Ukrainians continue their attempts at advancing in the direction of Vadyane and Apitne. However, their attempts are met with Russian counterattacks, which does not allow them to take any territories or claim any victories. Ukrainians were also reported advancing in the direction of Krasnogorivka from Stipove and Novokalinove, as well as some attacks in the direction of Veseli and Kamenka. Then from here let's move to the settlement of Bakhmut and first discuss the situation on its southern flank. Ukrainian assaults continued in the direction of settlements of Kurdyumivka and Zilinopilia, as well as Andriivka and Klishivka. While Russian defenses held in front of Kurdyumovka and Zilinopilia, as well as Andreevka, Russians themselves are engaged in constant counterattacks in the direction of Klishevka. Ukrainians here are extremely active and are doing everything in their power to capture this strategic village. Then we move to the northern flank of Bakhmut, and as always, Ukrainians were unsuccessfully attacking in the direction of Berhivka, Yagodne and Dubova Vasilivka. Next would be the Liman Krimina front and the situation here hadn't changed as much. As the time of recording there were reports of Ukrainian attacks all across this front. They were attacking in the Serebryansky forest as well as in the direction of Dubrova in an attempt to close off this Russian salient. Before that it was Russians who were on the attack, so here Russians and Ukrainians are engaged in active defense, occasionally launching limited assaults in attempt to probe each other defenses. Like on the other fronts, both sides are engaged in artillery duels and counter-battery activities. And at last let's visit Kupiansk front. 
Here, Russian offensive had significantly slowed down. One of the reasons why is that Ukrainians were not only being able to reinforce this front, but also counterattack Russians on several portions of the front. Reports of Ukrainian counterattacks are coming in regularly, but Russian sources claim that Ukrainians have no serious defensive lines on these fields and are now mostly fortifying settlement of Petropavlivka and sectors in front of Kupiansk. It would seem that the catastrophe that was looming over this front line never happened. Ukrainians were quickly able to reinforce this front and Russians seeing that this is what's happening had decided to advance more carefully without risking too much. Anyway, this is the end of the video. I hope it was to your liking. If it was, please consider supporting it with a like, comment, and if you haven't subscribed, a subscription. To you, it's few clicks, but for me, it's a great motivation to work harder and work even more, as well as it helps promote this video to a wider audience, thus helps spread the message. I thank you in advance. As always, humanity calls me to condemn all violence against human beings. Have a good day, and always remember, Russia will be free and great.